Good evening. This is Making the Case. I'm Yorit Tualde. Tonight, we're talking to Clifford Owensby, a black man at the center of yet another incident of alleged police brutality. He's paraplegic, and he made that very clear to the officers who pulled him over when they ordered him to get out of his car. Those officers then proceeded to drag Owensby out of his vehicle by his hair. Here's BNC's Ray Clark with how this all went down, but a warning that the video you're about to see could be hard to watch. The audio is hard to make out. That's 39-year-old Clifford Owensby telling police in Dayton, Ohio, he's disabled and can't walk. I'm gonna help you get, in, get out. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen, sir. The exchange starts escalating as the officer demands Owensby get out of his car. I cannot step out. I'm a paraplegic. I cannot. I'm a paraplegic, sir. Come on, come on, bro. I cannot step out of the car. Owensby requests a supervisor. The officer tells him you can get out on your own or be dragged. The officers then reach their breaking point. One officer pulling Owensby by the arm, another yanking his hair and dragging him across the pavement. Somebody help! Right here. Somebody help! Stop. Stop. Somebody help! All of this happening in front of a three-year-old who's sitting in the back seat. Officers say they watch Owensby drive away from a suspected drug house. They also say the windows on his car were too tinted, warranting a traffic stop. After running his name and learning Owensby had passed run-ins with the law, they wanted a police canine to search his car. The only thing officers found was a bag containing $22,000 cash. Owensby was cited for having a child in the car unrestrained and illegal tent, both misdemeanors. He was also charged with obstructing official police business and resisting arrest. Yeah, please don't listen. Leroy Moore is a disability rights educator and activist. He runs a group called Crip Hop Nation out of California, giving hip hop performers with a disability a platform to perform worldwide. He recently visited Owensby after his arrest. Oh, yeah, it, it was hard to see, but once again, police don't listen. So um, that's, that's, that's what we are dealing with in today's society, being black, being disabled, being poor. Ohio state law says disabled drivers should have a placard hanging from their rearview mirror or sign on their license plate indicating they are disabled. It's unclear if Owensby had either of those two. Meanwhile, we never hear the officers ask Owensby for proof that he is, in fact, a disabled driver. Meanwhile, Owensby has filed a complaint against the officers with the NAACP alleging false arrest, racial profiling, and illegal search and seizure. He also plans to file a lawsuit. In New York, I'm Dre Clark for Making the Case. No one should have to go through something like that, but Clifford Owensby lived it. And he's here tonight from Dayton, Ohio, to talk about his ordeal, along with his attorneys, James Willis and Clarissa Smith. Thank you all for being here. Clifford, I want to start with you. This must be an overwhelming time for you. Before we get into the specifics, how are you doing both physically and mentally? Um. Um, actually, I can't really get any sleep. Um, having nightmares. Uh, kids, they they're traumatized behind the fact, you know, they had to witness this, uh, especially on the television. Um, pain wise, I'm, oh man, my neck, my back, uh, my side, and um, my, they re injured it injury that it's going to take me months to get back before I even get back on my therapy. Um, overall, it's just sad. Um, I can't believe what they did to me. Humiliating. Uh, I wouldn't look this Walk us through, uh, Clifford, the day of this traffic stop, um, from your perspective, what happened as soon as you got stopped? Um, the officer stopped me. He asked me, uh, I believe what he told me, he said, I pulled you over for uh, and uh, he 
gave him my ID as he asked for it. He went back to check my ID. Uh, his partner came up to my passenger window and he, uh, I guess he said it was a tent reader. He put it on the window and he said 20%. So once he did that, uh, I was under an assumption that I was going to get a ticket and let go. Um, mm -hmm. Fortunately, when they came back, they asked me to stop the car, uh, turn it off. Uh, I did that. After that, they asked me to step out of the vehicle, which I replied, sir, I'm a paraplegic. From there, I, I just don't think they believe me and still can't believe now that they just wouldn't believe me. They just can't listen. What was your first thought when it became clear they either didn't believe you or didn't care? Um, I started to pray to God um, in fear of in fear of my life. Um, I just cried out for help. Anybody to help somebody just just thinking it was going to be my last time. I didn't want to go down like the rest of the boys in here. James, let me bring you in. Um, walk us through what went wrong legally with this traffic stop. We believe several things went wrong with this stop. Uh, first and foremost, the reason that Mr. Owensby was pulled over was for suspected window tint violation. The tint on his window was darker than the law provides. That in Ohio is a minor misdemeanor. Minor misdemeanor means in Ohio that the maximum punishment you can get is a fine. You cannot go to jail if you're convicted of a minor misdemeanor. And so when the police pulled him over, he checked his tent, and according to them said the tent was too dark, the only answer at that time was to give him a ticket and let him go. The officers claimed that they saw a child in the back seat that was not in a car seat properly, was not properly restrained. Again, in Ohio, a minor misdemeanor cannot be punished by jail time. Again, the response to that situation is to give a ticket and let him go about his way. But these officers decided to prolong the stop. They did, have, not, did not have any reason to further prolong the stop. They need a uh, renewed reasonable suspicion in order to prolong the stop further than the original purpose of the stop once that stop, uh, or once the purpose of the stop has been filled. They claim that the reason they prolonged the stop was because of his criminal history. That's completely unlawful in our judgment. And at this time, uh, we're prepared to file a lawsuit against uh, the city to address these issues um, with them dragging Mr. Owens be out the car when they should have simply let him go. The next big issue is how we did it. Uh, aside from the fact that he should have never been asked to step out of the car, should have never been removed from the car, he certainly was not ever supposed to be removed with such force. He told the officers repeatedly that he was a paraplegic, that he could not get out of the vehicle, that if they pulled him out, that he, they could seriously injure him, and these officers did not care. They pulled him out. They were determined to pull him out of that vehicle by any means necessary without any regard to his personal safety and well-being. And these uh, issues have got to be addressed. The city has got to provide some sort of explanation as well as the police chief and the police department. Uh, Clarissa, it's important to note that uh, police released some but not all of the body cam footage. Why not release all of it? And has your team been able to view it? We have not been able to review all. There's a lot of this stuff that was not released. For example, the officer said that they wanted a canine unit to circle the car and do a sniff test. In none of the videos that have been released that I've seen at least, have I seen any canine unit uh, doing the sniff test? Have I seen uh, what happened after Mr. Owensby was taken uh, into the police cruisers and transported to the hospital and then transported to the jail? Uh, we haven't seen these things. I believe there was another officer uh, cruiser that came to the scene where are their body cams. I believe that the city, uh, the police department has selectively released uh, some of the more 
for lack of better word, obscene portions of this video in order to satisfy the public and release something. But the fact of the matter is more happened. There's way more that happened after Mr. Owens be left the scene with the officers in tow that needs to be released for full transparency. And we believe that if the police department in the city is as committed to transparency as they've indicated they are in certain reports, they will without hesitation release the full footage from the entire incident from the moment that they stopped him all the way until he was, or until they emptied him into the jail. Because as we understand it, the city jail would not even accept Mr. Owens because of his injuries. Let's talk about the response to this incident from Dayton's mayor. It reads in part, everyone involved is owed a thorough investigation and one is already underway. This incident shows why our community led police reform process, which includes providing transparency, is more important than ever. Give me your thoughts to that response from the city's mayor. I believe that the city's mayor is making a statement that does not necessarily match their actions. I believe that it sounds good to say that there needs to be transparency. I think that it sounds good to make this general statement that everybody is owed a thorough investigation. But the fact is, we've all seen the video. There's very little that is left up to the imagination from what we see on this video. There's no excuse for pulling a man who is paralyzed from the waist down out of his vehicle by his hair, dragging him across the pavement, flipping him onto his back where his spinal cord injury is in direct contact with the ground, flipping him onto his stomach, forcing his hands to his back, his pants falling down to his knees, and then dragging him across the pavement to a police cruiser where they pretty much throw him in the back seat. He doesn't have any shoes on. There is no support for his legs, for his back. There's no telling the type of injuries that Mr. Owensby not only suffered at the present, but the impact of what has happened in the future. Mr. Owensby was hoping to be able to walk again and was in therapy pursuing the opportunity to do so, and now he's been set back. And so I believe it sounds nice to say everybody's owed a thorough investigation, but nobody is owed a more thorough investigation than Mr. Owensby. All right, Clifford, James, Clarissa, you guys sit tight because after the break, we'll talk more about how this case could have a larger impact on the city of Dayton and the growing attention this case is receiving nationally. We'll be right back. We're continuing our, our coverage of the disturbing arrest of Clifford Owensby, a paraplegic man who was dragged from his car by police in Dayton, Ohio. Still with me are Clifford Owensby and his legal team, James Willis and Clarissa Smith. All right, Clifford, um, you've seen the videos, you've heard the stories of other black men and women who've had similar encounters with police. Did it ever occur to you uh, during your encounter with those officers that you'd be one of those stories we'd be talking about tonight? And if so, at what point was that realization made? Um, at the point when uh, forcefully moved me from the vehicle. So uh, at that point, I, I didn't know what else to do but call out for help. Um, I really didn't even know if anyone was going to be there to help. I was yelled at the, at the top of my lungs as, as, as loud as I could. And, and James, let me bring you in. Uh, let's talk about protocol and training. How should this traffic stop been conducted in the first place? Once they realized that the man was a paraplegic and couldn't get out of the automobile, they had the option, and like plan B, if you wanted him out of the car, he can't get out, then the next thing you should do is get into the car with him and frisk him. You can't even search him because he hasn't been arrested. You can only search people who have been arrested. And we know anyone that saw The Godfather would know that they uh, know how to first command and because they first uh, the Bill Godfather in, in, while he was in the car and they knew that he was capable of killing them. And he ultimately did. 
So people can be frisked inside their, inside their automobile, and that's what should have happened in the Simpsons. Because I don't believe their fears for their safety were the motivating factors behind even asking him to get out of the car, and that's already been indicated. They say they wanted to uh, run a dog around the car. The person doesn't have to get out of the car uh, for the dog to walk around the car, but the utilization of the dog in this instance was absolutely illegal because it prolonged the stop. Obviously, they don't get the proper training, and I thank, thank the state and the city uh, because they unleashed these, these people on the streets of Dayton. They were ill prepared. I think they should be held accountable, and we intend to try to do just that. Clarissa, Dayton is in the process of searching for a new police chief. Um, what do you hope the next chief will take away from this incident? This incident, very seriously. I hope the next chief does not try to make excuses for what happened, doesn't try to rationalize what happened, doesn't try to normalize what happened, because none of those things are appropriate here. Regardless of how anyone feels about Mr. Owensby, the color of his skin, his criminal history, him having dark tint or having a child in the back seat without a car seat. Nobody should be dragged out of a vehicle by their hair, dragged across the ground and subjected to the abuse that Mr. Owensby was subjected to, particularly when they are unable to defend themselves and are at a disadvantage as he unfortunately is. He suffers from a disability. These officers need to be trained to encounter appropriately individuals with disabilities. And I'm hopeful that the next police chief takes the opportunity to implement protocol such that officers receive uh, training, ongoing training to uh, appropriately handle all members of the community, regardless of any uh, category they might fall into. Um, and, and I hope that the next police chief uh, is committed particularly to the black community and making sure that his officers respect and give the same respect to the black community as any other community is afforded. Now the NAACP, Clarissa, is now working with your team on this case. Can you tell us about their involvement? Yes, yeah, so their involvement is conducting their own investigation, a uh, thorough investigation um, into what's happened here. Um, that investigation coincides with our own investigation, our independent investigation with our investigators. Um, and we're going to piggyback off of each other, share and exchange information uh, in order to give the most comprehensive evaluation of, of what's happened here. Their experience stems from different places. Our experience stems from different places. And therefore, uh, with us working together, we should be able to get to the bottom of what happened here, address it head on, and try to hold the city and the police department accountable. All right, Clifford Owensby, who, who dropped um, attorneys James Willis and Clarissa Smith, thank you all for joining.